In this module, we'll cover the runner advisor and runner balance analyses. The goals of this module will be to review the importance of balancing runner systems, as well as learn how to balance runners. Why should we do this? It's critical to achieve this in order to have a consistency in your part quality, as well as the cost. So what's the importance of optimizing a runner system design? Well, first of all, runner system designs really depend on the material you're using, the flow length and pressure requirements of the part that you're filling. So naturally we want to run the smallest size runners possible in order to reduce our material costs, reduce gate freeze time, so this reduces the amount of packing time. Small runner diameters also reduce our cooling time. So these decreases in the packing and cooling times ultimately result in a reduction of our cycle time. So we can produce more parts more efficiently and faster. So in this learning module, we'll specifically cover the purpose, setup, and results of the following two analysis sequences, the runner advisor analysis, as well as the runner balance analysis. So let's we'll start with the runner advisor analysis. This produces a good preliminary runner size for you. It also works for multi-gated models, and we typically recommend running a runner balance analysis after running a runner advisor analysis if you're working with a family mold or multi-cavity molds without balanced layouts. So let's say maybe you're running an artificially balanced runner system. So there are a few steps to setting up a runner advisor analysis. The first step is to change a mold analysis type to single cavity or multi-cavity mode. This is a common tripping point for most, so many people skip over this step or forget to do it, and then when they go to build their feed system, they wonder why all their icons for that to build the feed system are grayed out. If that's happening to you, this is most likely the step you've missed. So next, you'll place your injection cones and orient the model, set your parting plane, specify your mold size, Set constraints as needed within the runner system properties. Create your runner system. We'll select the runner advisor analysis sequence from the wizard. Run the analysis. Review and apply any changes as necessary. And then of course we're going to run a fill analysis at least to verify some of these new runner dimensions that we've attained. Now don't worry, we're going to go through each one of these steps and there will be a practice at the end for you to practice these skills. When you run a runner advisor analysis, it will basically estimate the best runner system dimensions and will provide a list of the optimizations in your summary table here. From here you can select the section from the summary table to highlight the entity. So if you select it on the left, you can see that entity highlights in pink on the model. You may also apply each change individually or all at once by clicking on the button apply to the right. Here's a good example of the runner advisor resizing our gates for us to reduce our injection pressures and to help improve the quality by reducing our shear rates. So in the UI section we discussed a little bit about the results advisor. So we're using this and querying in that gate. And you can clearly see there's a red stop light and it's advising us that the shear rates greatly exceed the recommended limits. So on this model Below, you can see that's the case, but we ran this through the runner advisor analysis, and now you can see the quality is greatly increased on that image in the top. So, the runner advisor analysis not only strives to reduce the runner volume that you're seeing, but it can also, in cases, increase the sizes of your gates in order to help with shear issues. Now that we spoke about the runner advisor analysis, we'll talk a little more about the runner balance analysis. So in running this tool, it will basically try to achieve two things. It's going to try to balance your fill between the cavities within 5% variation. It's also going to optimize the runner sizes so that the overall runner size uh, system volume is minimized. The runner balance analysis, however, is limited to single gated models. So if you have models or parts that have multiple gates on them, you cannot use this. One gate per part 
movement for this application. You can even balance hot runner systems if you wish. So as we had discussed a little bit on the previous slide, there are a few applications that may be not be suitable for the runner balance analysis. For example, this image on the left is not possible to run a runner balance analysis on. The runner balance analysis can be run on the part that's displayed in the image on the right though. Again, the runner balance analysis is meant for balancing flow between cavities, not within a single cavity. So, the steps to setting up a runner balance analysis would be as follows. You create your multi-cavity or family tool. Then you can set any, set any constraints as needed within the runner system properties. We'll cover that a little later. After running runner advisor analysis and implementing the changes, save the model. Select the runner balance from the analysis wizard. Run the analysis. Review and apply any changes as necessary. And then of course, we would run a fill analysis just to verify that these new dimensions actually make sense and that we have a good balance between our parts. It's always good to have a quick sanity check. So once the runner balance analysis completes, you'll see that the summary tab will pop up along the bottom of your user interface. Looks much like the runner advisor analysis results that we saw. So this summary tab provides us information about the original runner dimensions as well as the suggested changes that we'd like to make. So from here you can select a section from the summary table to highlight the entity like we saw with the runner advisor and you can also apply changes individually or all at once by clicking the button to the right of the table. This is a good example of how the runner balance analysis can help balance a family tool. So in this case we have several components they vary quite a bit in their part volume. So, the image on the left, you can see it's clearly unbalanced flow. The bottom two cavities have a much larger volume, so they're filling quite a bit later than the top two cavities. Then on the right, after we run our runner balance analysis, you can see all four cavities are filling in a similar manner, within 5%. Which of the following are benefits of optimizing your runner system design? Both the runner advisor and runner balance analyses can be used on parts with multiple gate locations, true or false. A runner balance analysis should be run after a runner advisor analysis in which of the following cases? Hot runner layouts cannot be balanced using the runner balance analysis, true or false. The runner balance analysis will balance the fill between all the cavities within what percentage? Now that you've had the opportunity to watch this presentation, please feel free to try the following exercises to better practice your skills. For additional information on how to access these exercises, please refer to the introduction video. Thank you.